takes its name from the Arabic word for emptiness, Al-Zahara. But the Sahara is really a collection of deserts, and the most remote is the Tenere. I set out to cross the Tenere in the way caravans have done for a thousand years. It'll mean a journey of 1,200 miles over rock and sand by vehicle, camel and on foot. And it's a dangerous journey. For in this sweltering, desiccated furnace, death strikes the weak, the ill-prepared or the unlucky. They call it the land of fear. My name is David Adams, and as a photojournalist, I've made a point of going to some of the world's most remote places. My journey starts in the African Republic of Niger, a former French colony where the Tenere meets the Aya Mountains, which is why I'm in the ancient city of Agadez. Agadez is a mud city and there seems no end to the patterns that clay and straw can achieve. It's also a holy city of Islam, this mosque claiming to have one of the highest mud minarets in all of Africa. It's a city that got rich on trade. Less than 100 years ago, slaves, gold and ivory were sold here in the Agadez markets. Just love the chaos of these markets in Africa. You can get absolutely anything, and everything's being bargained, and it's all over the place. Sugar cane, onions, grain from Niger, and then there's this stuff, salt. It's actually been the mainstay of this whole area of Africa for probably more than a thousand years, and it's the great salt caravans that bring it here. This is Caravan Central first port of call after crossing the wilderness. From north, south, east and west, they converge on Agadez because it straddles one of the great desert crossroads of Africa. <laughs> Everything about these markets is geared to caravans. Clothing, footwear, headwear, even a haircut. Meat, drinks and fruit for a lengthy desert crossing. And of course, food for the camels too. Doesn't look very happy, does he? I think he's probably really upset because he can't eat it. It's sort of the reverse of having a carrot hanging in front of you. You've got lunch on your back and you can't do anything about it. This is truly stepping back in time. Here we are at the dawn of a new millennium and there are still people wearing swords. They're called the Tuareg, not people that you'd want to mess with. Only 18 months earlier, they were in full armed rebellion against the Niger government. So if you want to travel to the desert and survive, you need their help. Which is why I've got to go 120 miles to the north. That's 200 kilometers to Chimia, a place famous for its camel races. Here I'll find the people I need to get me across the Tenere. <laughs> 
So these are the people I'd come to meet, the legendary warriors of the desert. And they wouldn't look out of place in a Star Wars movie either. The Tuareg once ran an empire that controlled the central Sahara. No caravan could pass without their say-so. There are many theories about their origins. Some say they're one of the lost tribes of Israel. Others that they were originally Christian, hence the prevalence of the cross as a Tuareg motif. But today they're Muslim, and in stark contrast to the Islamic norm, it's the men who cover their faces, while the women leave theirs unveiled. Tuareg are fiercely competitive, many of them riding up to four days just to take part in this race. And today that's all it is, a race. Not long ago, they'd have lined up like this for a warrior's charge. They're off, and there's lots of jostling for the lead, which sometimes leads to accidents. What an awesome sight. These are descendants of desert pirates who as recently as the 1990s were still raiding caravans with lance and sword. ever designed a camel to gallop. It's more of an awkward lollop, half canter, half trot, not very comfortable for the rider. And it isn't a race for the faint-hearted. The course is just over two miles, or three and a half kilometers. Plodding across the Tenere with a caravan won't be quite like this. It takes 10 minutes to cross the line. And when they do, it'll be to the cheers of their women and the jeers of their rivals. It's going to be interesting crossing the desert with men like these. There'll be many races today, and in between, the dancing. A chance for the warriors to let off steam, and for me, a chance to take some photographs. It's, it's actually perfect moments like this, when there's an amazing picture and your camera breaks. This is my panoramic, and it's not working. This will never happen again, so I'll have to go and fix it. they dance until the prize giving. And this is the prize. Whoa, fantastic. <laughs> the legendary sword of the Tuareg, the Takuba. And it's certainly not a toy. They use Takuba for fighting. For fighting? Because it's something who every man, every Tuareg man, uh, will have a Takuba. But today they're more for show, he says, a symbol of manliness. But for a weapon that's just a symbol, it's extraordinarily sharp. The perfect prize for a warrior. So these races are about more than just rewarding winners. They're about creating legends.
It's as if we're back in the Middle Ages, in the time of the Moors, Crusader Knights, and tales of chivalry and honour. <laughs> 